Welcome back to the D5 tutorial series. In this lesson, you'll learn about applying post-processing and creating your output. Click on Effect and the post-processing panel will come up. The first one to explore is Exposure. I don't suggest turning Auto Exposure on for interior scenes. If you realize your scene is relatively dark, try adding some lights instead of adjusting the exposure to a high value. This can lead to overexposure, especially in areas outside of windows. Next is contrast. This parameter is used to adjust the contrast between bright and dark areas in your image. Then there's highlight. Highlight controls the brightest area of an image. When an image is overexposed, try pulling the highlight control to the left to reveal the overexposed details. Next is shadow, which is the inverse of highlight. It controls the darker parts of your image. Increasing this value will add more detail to the dark parts. Slope works much the same as contrast. White balance balances the color temperature of your image. Adjust this parameter to make your scene look warmer or cooler. Then we move to tint. While color temperature ranges between the orange to blue spectrum, tint ranges between the green to magenta spectrum. Both parameters can be adjusted to create the perfect balance of colors for your scene. Blue makes metal and emissive materials brighter having a hazy and dazzling effect. Lens flare simulates the flare produced by a real camera lens when shooting a bright light source. Vignette is used to simulate the darkening of corners of an image. Chromatic aberration is the phenomenon of light rays passing through a lens focused on different points, depending on their wavelength. The right chromatic aberration value adds to the realism of renderings. Saturation controls the vibrancy and purity of the colors in your scene. For even more color adjustments, D5 provides color grading with the D5 widgets. Go to Menu, Preference, and then Widget to activate color grading. If you're also a DaVinci Resolve user, you'll find this very easy to use. With this widget, you can adjust the global, highlights, midtones, and shadows separately. Now let's go back to the top and take a look at LUT. LUT or lookup table is like a filter template you can directly apply to your scene. D5 has some preset LUTs. You can try these one by one and adjust their intensity. Adding custom LUTs is also supported. For this scene, it doesn't need much adjustment, just a little bit of exposure and contrast. And then highlight and shadow. Since most of the materials here have a warm tone, let's lower the white balance value a little. Lastly is the saturation, and we're done. I would suggest avoiding too much adjustment for each parameter. Less is more and you can always turn to external editors such as DaVinci Resolve or Photoshop for more precise color correction. Next is creating your output which can be an image, panorama, or animation. For image output, click on image in the upper right and you can adjust the field of view here. D5 provides several aspect ratios to choose from, including 16x9, 5x5 or 4x3 or you can create a custom ratio. Preset image resolutions range from 2K to 16K. Finally, there is an option for creating separate image channels that help with post-production and image editors such as Photoshop. You can select which channels you need to create. One thing I need to mention is that when you're in the image rendering tab, you still have access to environment and effect, which means you can still do composition work. If you go to menu, preference, and then widget, you can toggle on advanced image rendering for output in PNG, JPEG, Targa, TIFF, and EXR formats. For the last step, hit the render button and select the location of where to save the file. After the rendering is complete, you'll find the file has been saved and named according to the current time. In this way, you don't have to worry about files getting overwritten anymore. Panorama output is almost the same, but one thing is different. There's no ratio option because most panoramas all have a 2 to 1 ratio. In D5, the ratio is preset and all channels are enabled to assist you with post-processing in your image editor. Creating your video output. Clicking on video will enter the video rendering tab. You can add up to 1000 video clips here. Using this tab, you can make keyframe animation. For example, if we want to move forward in this scene, we then add a camera, press W to move forward, add another camera, set a time, and then preview. 
Other parameters you can adjust include easy ease and keyframe interval. With auto keyframe interval enabled, D5 will automatically arrange the time for each camera for you. Of course, you can choose the custom option so you can set your own camera timings. Need to animate an object in your scene? I'll show you by using this character model. Place it here, click video rendering, set some cameras in the clip, and click on the model to see keyframe info in the upper right. Add one keyframe at the beginning, move the model, and add another keyframe a few seconds later. See that? Now it's walking. If you select rate matching, you'll see it's walking in a more natural way. Now we're ready to render. Select the resolution and format you want. I also suggest enabling NVIDIA DLSS by turning it on in the menu. This speeds up the rendering process by about two times. Finally, select the output location where you want to save the video, and the rendering begins. Render queue is also worth mentioning. You can add images, panoramas, and videos to the render queue for batch rendering. This saves you a lot of time instead of waiting in front of the computer. That's it for today's video. D5 Render is an all-in-one solution that's easy to use. If you have further post-processing needs, I recommend Photoshop for images and DaVinci Resolve for videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.